Behind me is Hamilton Palace, the largest private house to be built in Britain in over a century. Opulent, extravagant and impressive, yet empty. Left here to rot in the countryside of East Sussex. The story of its demise from costing over £40 million to build to a half-finished building project rests on one man, Nicholas Van Hoogstraten. Jailed for his part in a violent assault. Robin Hood for the rich. And of those, the worst is the man Hoogstraten. Hugh Stratton was born in Shoreham-by-Sea on the south coast of England in 1945. His father Charles was a shipping agent who frequently left Nicholas home with his two sisters and mother Edna. From a young age he used violence to get his own way. Tell me about how he used to um, uh, beat his mother or strike her if uh, she didn't do exactly what uh, he wanted her to do. By the age of 15 he was up to no good and was given a year's probation from school for receiving stolen postage stamps. By the time I was 15 or 16 I already had at least um, a stamp stock, philatelic stock, that was worth something like 25 to 30,000 pounds at the time, which was, which was a lot of money in those days. A year later he dropped out of school to join the Merchant Navy. He visited the Bahamas and established business types there, buying cheap property with the sale of his highly valuable stamp collection. He returned to the UK and hit the property scene in London and Brighton. He emulated an old ruse from Polish-born landlord Peter Rackman, known for his exploitation of tenants. Hoogstraten would buy property with sitting tenants who paid low rents due to their long-term contracts. He would then convince the tenants to leave, and the value of the property would rise sharply, guaranteeing him with large profits. The only problem was getting them to leave. And I was pushed by Nicholas Hoogstraten down my garden, back towards the door to my flat. And he said, get back in there, your property ends there. And he spat in my face again. He would get up to all the old Rackman tricks to get the tenants out, like putting in his goons up above them. And they would create a racket all night long, hold all night parties, and generally just harass the family below them until they gave up and got out. I was bundled into the boot of my own Rolls Royce and uh, transported off to Paris. Well, I was told I'd be killed if I returned, or a member of my family would be. Well, I was severely beaten up one day by Hooks uh, I think he's just a ruthless, just a ruthless man. Aged 22, he owned 350 properties in Sussex and claimed he was Britain's youngest self-made millionaire. It wasn't long before his ignorant and bullying behaviour led to the attention of the law. At 22, Hoogstraten was convicted for throwing a hand grenade into the house of Rabbi Bernard Bronstein, a Jewish cantor from Brighton. His son David owed a debt to Hoogstraten. David's mother Sylvia later testified in court that Hoogstraten had threatened her family, shouting, I'm a fascist and a Nazi, didn't you know that? If I wanted, I could pay £50 to men in London to get every Jew in Brighton bumped off. He was given a four-year prison sentence, plus a further three years for handling stolen goods. Despite this, by 1980, he owned more than 2,000 properties. It was in the mid-1980s that Hoogstraten began work on Hamilton Palace, named after the capital of Bermuda. AJ Brown & Co, now known as Chelsea Consultants, were asked to undertake the complete design and project management of Hamilton Palace. This was the largest private house to be built in Britain in over a century. Anthony Brown was the architect responsible for the project. We decided to visit Hamilton Palace to gain a greater understanding of the building. It's the sort of time you think, should we be blanking our number place? You don't want his heavies to start chasing us. The mansion was built to serve Hoogstraten's private art and furniture collection, worth an estimated £30 million. The house also contains a mausoleum, where he plans to be buried with all of his wealth, art, furniture and property, so that nobody else can enjoy it. This is it, the public footpath that all the fuss was about in the 1990s, and he was fighting a legal battle against the ramblers who wanted to roam freely across this land. So we're about to discover what the fuss was about. We've got to find a place to take off our drone um, where we're not really breaking any laws. We're not 
private property. Yeah, we can get close enough to his property to take a look. With a frightening reputation, you'd guess that nobody would want to get into business with him. Mohammed Raja did. Hoogstraten provided Raja with loans at cheaper interest rates than the banks. These loans were also not documented so that they could evade tax. This was all going well up until the 1989 housing price bubble burst. Raja continued to buy property despite the price decline and then didn't repay his loans to Hoogstraten. On the morning of July 2nd, 1999, two of Hoogstraten's armed thugs showed up at Raja's door dressed as handymen. A fight started when Raja opened the door. He was stabbed five times in the heart and neck and shot twice in the head with a sawn-off shotgun. Raja, a father of six, sadly died. Good evening. A multi-millionaire property developer who often behaved as if he was above the law has been found guilty at the Old Bailey of manslaughter. In 2002, Hoogstraten was sentenced to 10 years for manslaughter, but the verdict was overturned on appeal and he was subsequently released. Today's judgment finally brings to an end Nicholas Van Hoogstraten's quest for justice and vindication from an accusation that was always based on the most tenuous circumstantial evidence. However, in 2005, he was ordered to pay the victim's family £6 million in a civil case. You'd think that time at Her Majesty's pleasure might see the property magnate amend his ways, but cut to 2002, Hoogstraten fell out with his architect friend, Anthony Brown. Brown was the project leader for the construction of the palace. As of today, it has been left incomplete and uninhabited. Hoogstraten is currently working on property in Zimbabwe and was good friends with the country's former president, Robert Mugabe. He can also be found here at the Cortlands Hotel in Brighton, one of the many properties that he owns. Hoogstraten later changed his name to Nicholas Adolf von Hessen, now aged 77 at the time of uploading, remains one of the most precarious and wealthy people living in Britain. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing.